Kimono Style, the John C. Weber Collection, an exhibition tracing the transformation of kimono fashion in modern Japan from the late 18th through the early 20th century, will open to the public on Tuesday. This is the first ever exhibit hosted by the Japanese gallery in conjunction with the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Arts. We are introducing kimono as fashion. So usually when you think of fashion, you think of big brands made in the Western world, but kimono also had a fashion system going back to the 17th century. So I hope that this exhibition, the kimonos juxtaposed with Western couture, will emphasize the fashion aspect of the kimono. So um, I would like to emphasize that this is the first time that we are working together with the Costume Institute and I was very excited that we can juxtapose in one gallery Japanese kimonos with Western couture. The exhibit highlights not only the Japanese kimonos influence on the West, but Western art also had a huge impact on kimono patterns. So the Japanese kimono had a big influence on um, Western fashion going back to the early 20th century when, for example, Paul Poiré and Madeleine Vionnet used the kimono to draw inspiration for the new types of cuts. And later on, uh, from the 1920s, 1930s, the Meisen kimono that were produced uh, in Japan and promoted by department stores such as the Mitsukoshi, the Takashimaya, um, they were inspired by Western abstract art. So here you can see geometric patterns inspired by the steel, Piet Mondrian, and also Cubism. So it's a very interesting artistic conversation. It's not a one-way influence. Not only the kimono had an influence on Western fashion, but the other way as well. In the um, 17th, 18th century, silk was very precious, so only high-ranking samurai ladies, wealthy merchant class ladies had access to good quality silk kimonos. Then in the Meiji period, at the end of the 19th century, Japan opened its border to the West. Western techniques came to Japan and it became possible to create less expensive kimonos. And Meisen was produced from the 1920s from a relatively inexpensive silk from pre-dyed yarn with a technique called ikat. When you dye the pattern on the yarn and then you uh, wave it on the loom. So these were um, readily available for women who joined the workforce. So it's the 1920s when, for the first time in Japan, women could be typists or uh, phone operators, and they had their own income. And the department stores promoted seasonal trends and encouraged women to buy the new trends every season, and they had a very quick turn around. So this was actually inspired by Western marketing strategies. Japanese women for the first time in the 1920s and 30s could become typists or phone operators and had their own income to spend on either kimonos or western clothes. More than 60 kimonos are displayed along with the western dresses and other decorative art objects. Here um, I wanted to show that in the department stores you could buy both kimono and western fashion. And women actually had a choice whether they wanted to wear a kimono or they wanted to go western. The exhibit will continue through February 20.